Proudly, we hail. New York City, where the American stage begins. Here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station to bring you this story, as proudly we hail the Women's Army Corps. Our story is entitled, This Man's Army. And even with a title like that, the hero of our tale is a wack, who with feminine intuition got mixed up with communist espionage in Berlin. It's an exciting cloak and dagger narrative, as proudly we hail the Women's Army Corps. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment. But first, young lady, are you sitting at home wishing you had a more exciting life? Well, if you are, we have a place for you in the Women's Army Corps. You'll work with other young ladies like yourself. Women with minds of their own who want to be of service, in the service. In the Army, you'll be a part of a team with a long history of accomplishments. Achievements that have even made a difference in our way of life. Like when the Army developed evaporated milk. And like when the Army stamped out the scourge of yellow fever in Panama. And there are hundreds of examples. As a whack, you can share in this proud tradition. Join the Women's Army Corps and add your talents to the Army team. And now your Army presents the proudly we hail production, This Man's Army. The prettiest whack corporal you ever saw stepped off a Berlin streetcar early one afternoon and walked swiftly toward a large gray stone building. She paused before the wide swinging doors and glanced at the big letters on the sign which read, Headquarters, U.S. Army. She walked through the door and entered a long corridor. The corridor led to another door on which was lettered Intelligence Section. She paused, drew a deep breath, and entered the room where Sergeant Joe Fuller sat typing. <clears throat> yes, Corporal. I was told to see Captain Edwards. Captain Edwards. My name is Prescott, Mary Ann Prescott. So, Corporal Prescott, the captain can hardly wait. Yes, Sergeant. Uh, Corporal Prescott, sir. Oh, yeah, we'll have her come in. Now, I want you here to take notes. Yes, sir. Let's go, Corporal. Thank you. So, you're Corporal Mary Ann Prescott. Huh? Yes, sir. We'll have a chair. Thank you, sir. Your commanding officer suggested that you see me? Well, not exactly, sir. I suggested I come to see you, and I convinced Colonel Gorman it was important. You are in the medical detachment at the station hospital. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. I'm sure I discovered something of interest to intelligence, and, well, I asked Colonel Gorman for permission. Yeah. Well? Well, the other day I had the afternoon off, sir, and so my friend and I went to Hausman's Cafe this for lunch. This friend? Who was it? Uh, Julia Fraser. She's stationed at the hospital, too. Well, she goes out with a fellow who's in a heavy weapons company. He's a nice boy and all that, but I don't think he's really interested in Corporal, her because... I only asked about your friend because I thought it was important. Let's have the facts. Sir, it is important. I took Julia to lunch because she needed a little cheering up. Oh. You see, her boyfriend hurt his foot on maneuvers. Yeah. Well, we were ordering lunch. I couldn't decide between the sauerbraten and the veal sausage, and so Corporal, we were... I am only interested in the facts. Well, Julia wasn't interested in the menu. She just kept talking about Chris. Chris? Who is Chris? The fellow Julia goes out with, the one in the infantry. Oh, he had. Oh, you're writing all this down, Sergeant. His name is Chris Lafferty. Christopher Gerald Lafferty. I think it's... Well, anyway, that's not really very Corporal, important. Corporal, get to the point immediately and tell me exactly why you wanted to see me. Yes, sir. Anyway, while we were ordering, Julia was feeling very bad. Oh, I said that already. Yes, anyway, she happened to say, and I remember it word for word. Now, Julia said, if it wasn't for that new gun Chris's outfit was testing, Chris would never have hurt his foot. Well, sir, it just so happened I was looking at the waiter as Julia said that. 
And do you know what the waiter did? What did he do? Nothing. But his eyes narrowed. You know how a person's eyes kind of narrow when they hear something interesting? Yeah. And what happened then? Well, nothing. We finished lunch. I had the veal roast and I finished Julia's because she couldn't eat anything. Yeah, well, what I want to know, you see, is what happened that would be of any interest to the intelligence section. I told you, sir. This waiter's face just gave him away. Oh, he just... uh... So you think he may be a spy or an agent? Yes, sir. I'm sure of it. Yeah. Your friend, what did she think? Well, she, she, she didn't see him. She didn't, yeah. Well, thank you, Corporal. We will follow this right up. Oh, uh, thank you, sir. Captain. Yeah? Don't you want to know this man's name? Oh, yes, his name. I found out. It's Sepp Ruhlmann. Yeah. Hey, do you have that, Sergeant? Oh, yes, sir. Uh, thank you again, Corporal Prescott. <clears throat> Sergeant, how long have you and I known each other? About six years, sir. Yeah. Well, Sergeant, this is just between the two of us. You know, I thought it was a wonderful thing when the Army accepted women for service. I still think so. Even more. But you know, there are times... I know, sir. The world goes on. Things become more complicated. I remember when the regular Army, the whole United States Army, were just a couple of hundred thousand professionals. Well, it's a different world today, Captain, and it's a different Army. All right, you are. Now, what about this girl's story, Captain? I think she's been seeing too many movies. Then you want me to write this up, sir? Well, yeah, you better. Well, I'm off at 4.30. Why don't I stop off at that cafe for some coffee, sir? Oh, well, let's face it, Sergeant. Uh, women are just as smart as men. Some of them maybe even smarter. Well, you have women in business, industry, and the professions. Why shouldn't they be in the Army? Well, excuse me, sir, but that was all decided on ten years ago. Yeah, well, you uh, you might stop off for coffee at that cafe. What is the name of that waiter? Uh, let's see, uh, Ruhlman, Sepp Ruhlman. Mm. I'll put it through the channels. See if anybody knows anything. Expecting someone? What? Oh, you. Mm-hmm. Mind if I sit down? Oh, it's a public place. Thank you. Uh, where's your boy? Hmm? The mysterious waiter. Oh, he's coming over here now. Mm-hmm. Can I buy you some coffee? No, thank you. I'll pay for my own. Oh, just two soldiers, huh? Good afternoon. May I take the order? Yes, the corporal will have coffee. And uh, have you any Rhine wine? Oh, the best, yes, Sergeant. I'll have a glass. Uh, some food? No, we have excellent beer sausage. No, thank you. I'm not hungry. Ah, so. Uh, one coffee, one wine wine. Well, what do you think of him? What am I supposed to think of him? Look, I know you don't have any use for women's intuition. Now, who said so? But even back home, I used to, well, get certain feelings about people. Well, were you always right? Well, no. Mm-hmm. But I got such a good look at his face. To me, he just gave himself away. Mm. Pretty music, isn't it? Would you like to dance? I would not like to dance. And if I did, I certainly wouldn't dance with you. What's wrong with me? I don't like people to patronize me. I never did. I remember once back at school. Lower your voice. I didn't ask you to sit down here. You have no right to order me around. Smile at me. Uh, Nod your head. And if you're in the mood, you can hold my hand. Oh, now listen here. you listen here. Either this guy is what you think he is or he isn't. I'm here to find out. Now, the first rule, the simplest, the most elementary thing you have to understand is never to draw attention to yourself. Never make yourself conspicuous for any reason. If this guy is an agent, think of what kind of life he leads. Think of his attitude. I don't care about his attitude. All I want to know is furthermore... Isn't there some kind of valve or a switch or something that turns you off? Look, I'm not laughing at you. I'm playing this one straight. Now, consider this, waiter. If you're right about him, and he is an agent, do you know what kind of life he leads? What do I care? He never relaxes. He never sleeps. He's always on the alert. He tries to guard his secret every second. He never lets his guard down. But don't say anything. Here he comes. Ladies, coffee? A gentleman's wine? Oh, uh, wait a tell me, is there a telephone booth in this place? Yes, sir, it is near the cashier's cage, uh, just as you enter. Oh, yeah, yeah, I see. Oh, uh, will this be all? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Well, just one thing. 
You said you found out this guy's name was Sepp Ruhlman. But one thing you didn't tell us is how. How? Mm -hmm. It was very simple. But I'm sure it would never occur to anybody in intelligence. I asked. You asked? Mm. Well, that's great. You asked. Whom did you ask? I asked the cashier. I also happened to notice the phone booth is near her cage. Just goes to show how observant you fellows are. All right. We're now going to do what is known as getting the possum up the tree. That is, if he is a possum. Now, you do this and do it right. I'm going to make a phone call. Wait till I'm in the booth. Then call over the waiter. Ask him to go get you a package of cigarettes. I don't smoke. Oh, you don't smoke. Well, look, do it, will you? Why don't you tell me why? Yeah, I'll tell you someday, years from now, when we're both retired from the army and all our children have grown up and we're sitting in front of a nice, cozy fire. I wouldn't marry you if you were the last man on earth. If I were the last man on earth, you couldn't afford to be particular. Now, order the cigarettes. <laughs> You wish something, Sergeant? Yeah, tell me, Fraulein. Uh, that waiter over there, you see the one I mean? You know his name? His name? Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, Ruhlmann. Sepp Ruhlmann. Thank you. <laughs> oh, hello. Oh, Patricia, is your daddy home yet? Thanks. Oh, hello. I figured I'd try you home first. I'm having lunch where I said I would. I met a girlfriend of mine here. Yeah, the one who came around this morning. Well, I know the phone is bad, but if our girl is right, we can't wait. He'll make for the border and be in the red sector before we could get him. Well, I'll have enough for a hunch in just a minute. <laughs> you should see me. I got a big, stupid grin on my face. Yeah, I'm looking at him right now, but I'm making believe I don't notice him. Well, I asked the cashier for his name. That's how our little corporal found out. Wait a minute. He's talking to the cashier now. She's looking at the corporal. Now they're both looking at me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. A little help might be just what the doctor ordered. Yes, sir. Well? Well, we uh, may be in business. Well, you were not and how did you find out? Whether he is or not remains to be seen. From here in, you've got to be out of it. Now, you just get up. You can kiss me goodbye if you like, and then take off for your rock. What? Come on now, do as I tell you. If he's on a level, you and I can laugh about it later. And if he isn't, I can't afford to have to worry about you. I'm sitting right here. I'm going to see this thing through. Now, Angel, after we're married, you can give the orders. Right now, you're going to take them. All right, now, smile. A great big one. That's it. Now, smack your face with your hand as though you just thought of something. Make a great big excuse and fly out of here. Okay, go on. Hey, I forgot. I clean forgot. I'm on charge of quarters tonight. I better get right back. Excuse me, Corporal. What? I am afraid I must ask you to change your plans. Hey, what do you think you're doing? I must ask both of you to look toward the cashier. You see that sack she holds? One would think she's putting away some money, but I may assure you that she is holding an automatic pistol. I have nothing to lose, you can understand. Oh, sure. So both of you, get up, walk toward the rail of the cafe, quite slowly, quite, uh, what is the word, um, casually? It'll do. Well, what are we going to do? What do you think we're going to do? Exactly what the man says. You're sensible. There are others in this place who closely observe each movement. They, too, are armed. But uh, for the benefit of those patrons who do not share our little secret... The three of us shall enact a small drama. Look, how do we know we're being covered? Even if we are, they wouldn't dare to shoot in a public place like this. Maybe. This guy has an ace showing. We don't even have a pair of deuces. You want to bet your life he's bluffing? Very prudent. So please take your cues from me. I am sorry about the wine, sir, but you can complain to the manager. Take your cue, please. Yeah. I'll complain, all right? They charge enough in this joint. Oh, the manager is in his office. This way, please. Uh, permit me to open the door. You are listening to the Proudly We Hail production... This Man's Army will return in just a moment for the second act. Have you noticed the trim uniform worn by the young women serving in the Women's Army Corps? 
Well, this uniform not only stamps the wearer as being smartly dressed, it indicates, too, that she's doing her part to keep America strong. If you're a young lady between 18 and 34 and can qualify, we urge you to do your part in making unity, strength, freedom a reality. Go to your nearest United States Army recruiting station and enlist in the Women's Army Corps today. You are listening to Proudly We Hail, and now we present the second act of This Man's Army. These are the two Kozlovsky. Mm. Now be seated. How did they blunder upon this discovery, then? What is even more important, how much do they know? Quite true. You're the most hidden member of the organization. They have uncovered you. How many more do they know? The sergeant made a telephone call. Perhaps he has associates en route. Is that true, sergeant? Oh, don't ask me, Sap. I'm a stranger in your fair city. Why are you yelling? Easy, easy, honey. He'd just as soon smack you, too. Besides, he got his color all wrong. We'd better not question them here. We'd better get them over the line at once. In broad daylight, impossible. But we cannot remain here. Where then? Let me think. Schmidt. He has an apartment behind his barber shop. Good. Take him out the back way. No, you had first better get a car. Bring it here to the rear door. You there. Whatever you in that handbag. Why do you open it? I'll take that. Is she armed, sir? No. Is it all right with you gentlemen if I put on a little lipstick and powder my nose? Yes, your handbag. Thank you. Now watch them, Zep. I will bring the car in a moment. Hurry. Well, you two, sit at that table over there. Oh, no, no, with your backs toward me. Got to hand it to you, Zep. You've been around. If you face me, you both spring at once, and I may only have a chance to kill one of you. <laughs> The other might prove troublesome. Oh, yes, sir, Sepp. You're an experienced man, all right. Yes, I have been around. Uh, you do seem quite uh, calm. You are aware of your situation? Well, now, uh, some of my people should be here most any time now. Your boy Kozlowski is getting a car. Now, it's a question of who shows up first. As a matter of fact, we're betting on it, aren't we? Yes, we wager on with our lives. And I fear you two have lost. Yes, Koslovsky. Get up. All right. To the door. Look, Marianne, I'm sorry, but I'll get us out of this. You think so, eh? He will. I know he will. Captain, if we'd only gotten here just a couple of minutes sooner. Well, as though you trying to drink that milk now. It's spilled all over the floor. Who's left here in the cafe? Oh, just the little fish, the expendables. They all tell the same story. They don't know from nothing. They just work here. How were they to know the joint was a headquarters for a commie espionage ring? Yeah. That girl over there, the cashier, she better not get cute. The sergeant was on the phone with me. I know she's in this thing. You bring her back to the manager's office, Hastings. Come on, sister, and let's go. But I told you, I know nothing. All right, lady, if you know nothing, what do you got to be afraid of? After you? I have worked here for three years. Never has there been anything wrong. Yeah, that's always the first time. Here she is, Captain. What's your name? Dorothea Hoffman. But I know nothing. I'll tell you a little bit of what you know. Yesterday, a whack corporal asked you the name of a waiter in this place. Today, my sergeant asked you the name of the same waiter. My sergeant saw you very chummy with that waiter. Now, I come here, and the sergeant and the whack corporal are gone. People say the two of them headed back here to the manager's office. Now, talk. Yeah. Corporal Gordon was giving the cashier's cage a once over. There's a little sliding panel on the floor. Look what he found underneath it. A pistol. What do you know about that, Dorothea? A pistol? I know nothing about it. I have never seen it. Yeah. You must have gotten the two of them to come back here and then taken them out the back way. Listen, sister, if anything happens to those two, you're in it for murder. Look, give yourself a break. Do yourself a favor. Tell us where they were taken. You're in this all the way up to your neck. And maybe you think we're kidding. 
No, she knows we're not fooling. Okay. Gordon Curran, take this one in. Yeah, just think about this, Dorothy. Uh, you keep your mouth shut, and the best you can hope for with us, the very best is to be an old, old lady when you walk out of the jailhouse, if you live that long. Play ball, and, well, we'll take that into consideration. But I know nothing. Except Ruhlman, he fooled me. I thought perhaps it was the black market or, or smuggling. Espionage? No. About that, I know nothing. I am innocent. I am... I was foolish, but I am innocent. Well, you better hope we get him back alive. Take her away. Any ideas about where they could be, Captain? Well, the Reds would love to sneak him into their own sector. Well, they'll have a tough job doing that, all right. And then they probably got him hidden out somewhere in our zone. But where? It's a big city. Well, let me tell you this, Hastings. I'll take this whole town apart house by house if I have to. Oh, poor Sarge. Maybe he might have had a chance to make a break for it if he were alone. But the girl has to worry about her. Yeah. But not because she's a girl. Just, well, she was never trained for this kind of thing. You know, I met her this morning. She's a good soldier. <laughs> Funny. What does the average guy do in a tough spot? He lights a cigarette. Girl, she puts on lipstick and... Hey, look here. Poor kid, she must have been so nervous she left her lipstick here on the table. <laughs> this piece of tissue. You can see where she used it to blot off the... And... And... Captain, yeah, what's the matter? Hastings, round out the squad quickly. Where's the nearest telephone? We'll need the civilian police to help us. Well, Captain, what happened? What happened? The greatest thing in the world happened. What a day that was when somebody got the brilliant idea to put women in this man's army. How did Ruhlman's discovery occur? Was he betrayed by one of our people? Are any of the others known? How much of our plans are known? Do you have any operatives in our organizations? I have been patient with both of you. I personally do not believe in unnecessary unpleasantness, but I have methods that always ensure results. Wait, Kaslowski. Only you and I are aware of our mission here. The others in the cafe did not know we are agents. I am positive that these two are working alone. And yet they discovered me. I admire their talent. And perhaps we can all be intelligent. Now listen, both of you. A street. Any street has two sides, is it not? Well, it is a simple truth, admit it. All right, I admit it. Don't say a word. The wise man chooses the side of the street where life can be pleasant and profitable. I have been on both sides of many streets. I have been a Nazi, and now I am a communist. And I am a communist because they pay well, and because in our lifetime they will be the winning side. Kozlowski here is an idealist. He despises me for my practical outlook. But uh, there is room enough, money enough for all of us. We can offer you a great deal. Wealth, power, why fight us? Mr. Sepp, few girls whose face wouldn't crack a clock can live to be 22 without getting a few propositions. You know what I do? I laugh them off. But for you, I have only one answer. You... Kasowski, look out. Uh, uh, grab his arm, Mary, and hold him. The two of you stand back. I have a gun. Zepp, are you all right? Yes. It's good that you heard the noise. Schmidt. Koslovsky. Forget him for now. These two are more important. I realize that we cannot do business with him, and since we cannot take them back with us... Best that we dispose of them at once. Oh, wait a minute, please. Could I say something? You are a bit late. Not to you. I mean to him. Sergeant, do you realize I don't even know your name? That's right, you don't. I'm sorry I got in the way so much. Well, Sepp, where shall it be done? Not here, not in my place. My shop is suspected. Well, we can no longer be sure. You and I and Koslovsky must leave for the eastern zone at once. Shoot them now. Very well, very well. 
You want to come on, Sam? I wouldn't try it now, friend. I can hear some people downstairs in your barber shop. An old trick, Sergeant. You cannot gain any delay. Now, don't you hear somebody walking up the stairs? You can't fool me with that childish trick. Go ahead, Schmidt. No, no, he's right. I hear steps on the hey, stairs. Who's there? Captain! Who's there? No. I haven't uh, we have been betrayed. All right. Take him out. Brother, I don't think I was ever so glad to see you in all my life, Captain. Well, Sepp, how are things on your side of the street today? Sepp doesn't seem to have too much to say. Who's this joker on the floor? Well, you can sweep him out with the rest, sir. You two all right? Yeah, we're all right now. You know, if I were you, I'd give that girl a great big kiss, Sergeant Joe Fuller. <laughs> so that's your name, Joe Fuller. I uh, had that in mind all along, Captain. If it wasn't for her, we'd never have found you. You used your head, Corporal. Joe Fuller, Joseph Fuller. No, I like Joe better. She deliberately left her lipstick on the table so we'd notice it. Her lipstick? Yeah. What did the lipstick have to do with it, sir? Well, how did she manage to do it without them noticing? How'd you do that, Corporal? Sergeant Joe Fuller. Mr. Joe Fuller. Mrs. Joe Fuller? Were you sitting at the table, Sergeant, back there in the manager's office in the cafe? Yeah, wait a minute. Now, I remember how the chairs were placed. You must have been sitting with your back toward them. That's how she did it. Uh, did what? She took a chance and it worked. Yeah, but what did she do? She used her lipstick as a pencil. She wrote with it on the table. What? Well, how do you think we found this place? There on the table, hidden under discarded tissue, she wrote it. Schmidt Barber, in lipstick. Mary Ann. Mrs. Joe Fuller. I think it sounds very nice. Yeah, well, hadn't you better wait till I ask you? Oh, you'll ask me. I'm not worried about that. Better ask her fast, Joe. I think she's going to make you the best wife in this man's army. Tired of the same old office routine... Okay, gals, now you can get away from it all. Join the Women's Army Corps. You can travel all over the world, meet new friends, see new places. That's right. In the Women's Army Corps, you can escape the humdrum routine of your present life. Visit exciting places in this country. Travel in Europe, cross the blue Pacific, cruise through the Caribbean. Make new friends among young men and women all over the world. And you'll have plenty of leisure to enjoy those travels, too. You get a 30-day paid vacation each year, plus many weekend passes. Why don't you join the WAC? Yes, visit your local United States Army recruiting station and talk it over with the friendly recruiting sergeant. Believe me, you'll enjoy life more in the Women's Army Corps. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center in New York for the United States Army Recruiting Service. This is Mark Hamilton speaking, inviting you to tune in this same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail.